Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Deron Cole's Morning Show. Welcome to all those live listening and to those that are watching this later on different social media platforms. This is your host himself, Deron Coles. Um, this is episode 20 on a beautiful Monday, February 8th, 2021. So let's just dive right into it. The Super Bowl. Uh, yesterday, I don't know who you were cheering for. Um, I know we were all cheering for a, a better game. But if you don't know, if you didn't watch it, and then you're watching this video because you said I'm not watching the I'm not watching the game. The, pa the wow, the Patriots because it's of Brady. The Buccaneers, or you can just call them the Bradys, honestly. But the Buccaneers uh, did end up winning the game, 31 to nine. They are the Super Bowl 55 champions, and they took a uh, Patty Mahomes and the Chiefs crown right off their head. So uh, let's just talk about it. I know, like I said, most of us all watched the game, so I'm not going to do like a huge, um, like huge analysis of like play by play. But I'm just going to go try to do my best to go over things that a lot of people most likely didn't know. And honestly, what I want to focus on is the re like like I've talked about in the past. If you don't know me, I'm a big legacy person, whether it be Brady's legacy or Andy Reid's legacy, or obviously who people thought might be the new GOAT, Patrick Mahomes' legacy. Um, so I want to go into that. And when I say recap, recap what these results mean for the future for them. So um, just like I said, a little quick recap. First quarter, nothing seemed too off about the game. The um, um, I, I think it was 7-3, like nothing too crazy. Uh, halftime, the Chiefs were down, but like it wasn't too bad. So everyone expected the Chiefs to be down because that's what they do. And then from there, just kept on going, and they never, they never scored a touchdown. And that, that by itself, if you if you had money and you bet money, like the Chiefs aren't going to score a touchdown, and you put a hundred dollars on that, I don't know how much money you would have got, but you'd probably be rich probably would have turned a hundred dollars into at least a minimum at least like five thousand dollars at least because five to hundred hundred and five thousand maybe a hundred into one thousand I think more than that though because if you said that they're not going to score at all you you would have had to make at least more than that because they have one of the most high power offenses of all time honestly like Patrick Mahomes by himself is a legend already at his young age. Travis Kelsey's Hall of Famer. Tyreek Hill is one of top five, top six receivers out there right now. So, and their defense just didn't show up either. Like, the Chiefs just didn't show up today. But like I said, to to recap the whole game, kind of first quarter was tied. Second quarter, it, they were down a little bit. Third quarter, the, the Buccaneers came out swinging. And then... In the fourth quarter, they just kind of just held them down. That that's really it. They weren't. They didn't do a lot of scoring in the fourth quarter, but their defense just shut them down in the fourth quarter. And shout out to the Bucks defense because the offense definitely showed up and they did their thing. But the Bucks defense did not let up. I, I know Brady won the. Uh, well, I know, but maybe the viewers don't. Brady did end up winning the Super Bowl MVP award, and honestly, I think he should have went to uh, that. That linebacker, number 54, I think his last name is David or Davis. He held Kelsey down and he held the run game down. Their linebacker gave gave everything he had. Um, and unfortunately for the Chiefs offense, they did their offensive line was banged up. They had their left tackle out. There's, he's a pro bowler, all pro Eric Fisher. First round draft pick a couple years ago. Like first overall pick. And then I believe if, if there, it was their right tackle or right guard, another lineman was out. So they basically had to do uh, switch rule. Uh, what's the game? Uh, moving chairs. What do they call it? Uh, the singing chairs. I don't remember what it's called. As a kid, you know, you you got to walk around the chairs and pick a new seat. Um, that's basically what they had to do with their offensive lineman. They had to do the switch rule. They had to move their 
right guard to left guard and the right the backup right tackle moved to left tackle because he's better there and they had to do a whole whole switcheroo and they're one of their linemen this was his first start ever as an NFL player was in the Super Bowl and he had to go against and Dominican Sue who's on the, the defensive line for the Buccaneers he had to go against Shaquille Barrett had to go against Jason Pierre Paul who all of these people are all pro first round draft picks like pro bowlers and to be asked to watch them or to guard them for your uh, first NFL start is a huge task so that that was something going in the a lot of sports analysts were saying like look out for that people aren't t talking enough about the offensive line of the Chiefs being banged up because it's a lot to have a rotation or have a a way you do something for they have to play 16 games right then they have to play to get to the Super Bowl you have to play two or three depending on what seed you are uh, playoff games to get to the Super Bowl so minimum you play 18 games doing with this lineup with this rotation you're used to it and then on the biggest stage of them all you have to switch it because of injuries last game um two weeks ago there um or maybe it was three weeks ago but there eric fisher the left tackle he tore his achilles so they knew he wasn't coming back but it was a lot that's the, it's honestly the same thing that happened to the, the green bay packers they're they're the highest paid lineman in the league right now david bakhtiari for the packers he got injured as well and jason pierre paul beat up the Packers back up as well so but at, just like I did everyone was like well even if the, the line is uh banged up Mahomes will come to show out and boy did he ever Mahomes showed up and showed out he did um he did start off shaky in the beginning because the, the line Jason Pierre Paul has the wingspan of like a, a bird and just kept bat batting batting all his passes but after he got into his rhythm and we saw some Mahomes magic and his teammates, to be honest, just let him down. Travis Kelsey dropped balls. Uh, Tyreek Hill dropped a touchdown. Uh, I think that was Hardman. McCole Hardman dropped a, a first, an easy first down. The running back dropped a, a, fourth, a fourth down conversion. So after all these drops and penalties... They had a hundred yards of hundred yards worth of penalties, and, and I believe in the first half alone. So you can't just give the game up, not in the Super Bowl. So the Chiefs, honestly, like the no no disrespect to the Bucks because they did their thing, but the Chiefs very honestly gave this game up. Like they gave them the game and the refs too. But I don't like putting the game on the refs. The refs they did do a lot of. BS calls for for the Bucks and not the the um, Chiefs. It was a little lopsided, as it goes when Tom Brady is the quarterback of a team. They they did a lot of defensive passing interference or um, defensive holding calls on their cornerbacks, and they were actually they weren't wrong. They were blatant holds, but they weren't doing it for the other side. Before Travis Kelsey or someone would try to go grab a ball, the linebacker would already be on their back. And there will be no defensive pass interference call. And I was like, that's like, it's not fair. So if you give up 100 yards worth of penalties in the first half alone, and you don't score one touchdown, and you have a banged up, uh, a banged up line, offensive line, chances of you winning are very slim to none. But we saw that boy Mahomes try to he gave everything he had, and that's I respect it. He gave everything he had, and like I've been telling everybody, I I don't know. I really thought that Mahomes would be like the the mix of Joe Montana and Tom Brady, because Joe Montana, if you guys don't know, he is four and zero in Super Bowls. He's been two four Super Bowls, and he's won four Super Bowls. He's never lost one. So for a long time, people said, well, he's the goat. He didn't have a lot of too many records, but he has like three or four MVPs. He has four Super Bowls, and he Jerry Rice was his wide receiver. So everyone said, Joe Montana is the GOAT. But now we got somebody that's done some things no one's ever done. So I know I did a whole lot of yapping about Mahomes, but I, now I got to talk about the winner. I got to talk about the Super Bowl MVP, the five-time 
Super Bowl MVP, seven-time Super Bowl champion, Thomas Brady. Oh, my gosh. Just the go to goats, man. If you took everyone, everyone always talks about Jordan six, right? Jordan getting six champions in the modern age, in the modern age, is almost unfathomable. And him going six and zero oh is also absurd. So for Brady, Brady's not seven and zero. Oh. Brady has been to ten Super Bowls and he's seven and three, but he's only been in the league for twenty years. So to be in the league twenty years and you get to the Super Bowl, ten of them. That means if he walk, if he signs up for football and he's like, I'm just, I'm going to play, there's a 50% chance this man is going to win it all. Or there's a 50% 50 chance he's going to go. And then it's a seven out of that 50% that chance that he'll win because <laughs> he's won seven of them. So that's just unheard of and unfathomable. And my headline going in was this. Just to, just to talk about Mahomes a little bit longer, and then I promise we're going to focus on Brady and what this means for his legacy. But this is relevant to that. My headline going in was, Brady is already the GOAT, but Mahomes could pass him in my eyes. Because Brady, no one has ever really looked at Brady and said, he's the most talented quarterback we've ever seen. He's really good. Like he's a phenomenal player. He has a. If you go look at his 2008 um, MVP season, that's one of the greatest football seasons. Like for one, excuse me, for one player of all time. So it's not questioned if Tom Brady's good or not. That's just that's absurd. He's obviously a great player. If he wasn't, he wouldn't be able to have the things that he, the accomplishments that he has. But. No one ever looks at him and says he's the most talented quarterback ever. They sometimes give it to Aaron Rodgers. They give it to John Elway, Dan Marino, even though Marino wasn't able to win any uh, championships. And now they've been giving it to the new kid who has broken all the youngest records, all the fastest records. Youngest quarterback to win, like, the Super Bowl. Or youngest quarterback this time to uh, come to, to beat the two Super Bowls already. Youngest youngest person and fastest person to ever get to 100 passing touchdowns. He's gotten all those records. So everyone said if he keeps that pace, it's pretty obvious that he could become the GOAT. He's already been to one Super Bowl and won one. He already has one MVP. He came in second in MVP this year. It's already pretty obvious that he what he can do. So if he can beat the current GOAT, if Mahomes could have beaten Brady... It doesn't automatically make him the GOAT, but now he has every opportunity to cement himself as the GOAT. If he beat Brady, and now he'd be 2-0, he has one MVP, second place in one time, and then let's just say over the next 20 years he goes to six more Super Bowls, that means he's been to eight, um, he wins five, he goes five of three, right? You gotta, you gotta count the one that he beat Brady as pretty high. You made Brady go six for four, and you're five for three, but you beat Brady. And let's say you got a three, four, whatever MVPs. Um, you can you can arguably say that he's the GOAT if he has all the over the next, like I said, 20 years, he breaks all the touchdown records, all the the um yards records. And yeah, he's the fastest person to throw or youngest and fastest person to throw to ten thousand yards. Like I said, hundred touchdowns, all that. So if If he would have broken all those all-time records, most passing yards in a season, most passing yards in a, this history of the NFL, like for a career, all those, and he beat Brady and then got a couple more Super Bowls, it would be like, yo, the kid's the GOAT. When it came time to beat the best, he beat the best. And that's the only, re the only way you can be the best is you got to beat the best. It won't automatically make him the GOAT, but... Later down the line, it will cement his position. Now, let's look at it from Brady's side. Brady has already had M MVPs. He's the oldest MVP of all time. He's 43 playing. Like, we know Tom Brady has six Super Bowl rings. He's been to 10. He's going to his 10th Super Bowl. But now he's going up against the new kid. And if he loses to this kid, it's like, eh. It doesn't even move his position at all. 
the thing, the fact that he's on a new team and dragged the. This is one stat I heard yesterday that blew my mind. Tom Brady has the most winning percentage of any player, any organization, of anything to ever come to sports. He is the most winning thing of all time. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the most losing franchise of all time, of all sports. Tom Brady goes to that franchise and immediately goes to their 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 franchise and makes them winners that year, immediately. And I'm not going to overlook the, the fact that they signed the house. They signed everyone to that team, but the Chiefs have just as, just as good as offensive weapons as they do with Antonio Brown, Gronkowski, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones. They The Bucks have firepower, but so do the Chiefs, so it's, it's even. It's not like they went against the, the Dolphins or something and we're like, oh, well, they couldn't keep up, like... Sorry, Dolphins fans out there. I'm just saying. Um, or who has the number one pick? Uh, the, the Jaguars. It's not like they went against the Jaguars or something like that. So to get to the point, everyone's talking about the new kid. Brady's like, yo, I'm still on the block. I'm still here. So it, it would kind of be like if Zion, who's supposed to be the next whatever, if he already had a uh, an MVP and he already had a... a um, like you can kind of compare it with Kawhi when they were going against LeBron, but it's not like that. Let's use Zion. And I also have a really another really good comparison. But if Zion already had an MVP, already had a Super Bowl, and he didn't have to go against LeBron yet, and then LeBron was like, yo, I was injured. Like, wait till I come back. If he said, wait till I come back, and then, like, people are like, yo, you know Zion's going to be the future GOAT. He's going to be better than Jordan, going to be better than... LeBron, LeBron's like, all right, let me let me put an end to that. And he goes and beats him. That's what this was. Brady said, you guys are saying that this new kid is the best on the block. But the best on the block still here. I'm still sitting right here. He got to come towards me. And I actually have a theory about that that I want to go into. Should I, I'm going to just go into that now, honestly. No, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because I want to finish this thought. And then I'm going to go into that. But... For Tom Brady's legacy, this, to me, cements him as the GOAT of all GOATs. Because, like, I just gave all that backstory with, they, they said he this new kid's the coming up and GOAT. And I think he could have been if, if he beat Brady. But now that Tom Brady has now beat Mahomes, I think that that's it. I Seven Super Bowls, been to ten, beat this guy that is most likely going to go on to be this generation's GOAT, most likely. There's some contenders and stuff, and we haven't seen what Trevor Lawrence is going to do. There's some contenders. Um, but Joe Burrow's out there, even though he got hurt. Joe Burrow was playing like he was a top 10 quarterback already this year. It's his first year. So, to like I said, to get to the point, Brady beat that guy. Brady, like I said, to be the best, you got to beat the best. This new up-and-coming guy with all these fastest records, youngest MVP, youngest guy to win a Super Bowl, you go and you beat him. And not only do you beat him, I know it's the de it's not Brady against Mahomes, the defense, whatever, but your team, your team annihilates his team. They don't even score a touchdown. And where you throw almost a perfect game. Brady, I, I don't know, people don't really know his stats like that. Brady had like an 80% completion percentage. For three touchdowns, like that was he, he had a almost perfect immaculate game, no interceptions, nothing like that. Mahomes threw two interceptions, no touchdowns. Like this is going to be a huge blemish on his record. So, like I said, I think f for me this cements Brady as the goat of all goats because when to be the best, you got to beat the best, and no matter what. You can always say, like, I, I did what I had to do. I was old, and I still whooped him. <laughs> and not, like I said, to get to that good comparison I was talking about, some someone put yesterday, you guys need to understand, this would be like if um, Wizards Michael Jordan went on to go and beat that up-and-coming new LeBron James that got the chosen one on his back and came out the gate dropping 30, 40 bombs on people and... 
he just came out the gate running. And Michael Jordan was like, y'all are calling this guy to go, and I'm still here. But the only the difference is, and this is what's immaculate about it and amazing, the only difference is when Michael Jordan was this old, his teams sucked. <laughs> for the short backstory, for those that don't know, they only know the 6-0 Michael Jordan. He was the GOAT perfect man of all time. Michael Jordan retired. Went to go be on go went to go be an executive of the Washington Wizards, and then he missed the game, so he went kind of on to sign himself. He didn't give himself a salary like to be a player, and I think he like took away his salary from the Wizards as well, the from the executives, and I think he. And I do know I know that he signed himself. He just was a player. Um. But his team, like he did all right, he was Michael Jordan. He didn't go on average 30 points a game, but he was averaging like 23 a game. He was being Michael Jordan. He played well, uh, but his team sucked. They didn't even make the playoffs. Like his teams sucked. So the difference there is Brady, he's this old, and his teams do not suck. <laughs> he's still playing at such a high level, 43 years old, and he has his seventh championship. This is just absurd, man. And the the way in which he's did, done it, and this is this is the only shining light maybe for Mahomes. They said I was looking at the stats, and Brady has a huge gap in between his Super Bowls. He could have gone to more, is what I'm trying to get at. He's gotten a lot more over these last recent years, because he won one in 2003, 2004. Um, o three o four. Then he lost against the Giants. I feel like I'm forgetting one. O three o four. I think they went one again in like o five. Let's just look it up. I know I always say I don't do much googling during the show, but let's do it. Super Bowl history. Because I saw this stat that he has a big gap between 2008 and 2016 where he just didn't win any Super Bowls. But like I just told you, he's still been to 10. Because during that time, he lost, uh, he, did, he lost to... During that time, he lost to Eli twice. So that doesn't make sense. So he won in 02. He won in 02. He won in 04, 05, won in, and then he lost in 08. That's his first loss. So he's already he's three and one at this point. And then he went back in 2012, lost to the Giants again. So now he's three and two at this point. Then he goes 2015, and he wins again. So from 2008, really from from 2005. From 2005 all the way till 2015, 10 years, he didn't win any Super Bowls. And like I said, he's been to 10. He, he went to the Super Bowl, but he hasn't, he didn't win. So, the only shining light where I'm going with this is if Mahomes has any chance of becoming the GOAT, in my eyes, he would have to do something obviously that's never been done before. That's how you become the greatest. He'd have to win eight Super Bowls. And I don't think that's happening. Not in today's. There's too many talented people for him to win eight. But like I said, Brady had a big gap. Brady's been to ten. So what if Mahomes goes to nine and wins eight? You know what I mean? Like, and this is this is the only loss that he had was to Brady. The only argument that I could see where people's like, yeah, he's the goat, is yeah, he lost to Brady. Yes, he did lose to Brady. However. <laughs> That was really on the defense, and Mahomes played like the best he could do. And Brady's losses, Brady has three losses, two to Eli Manning and one to Nick Foles. And Mahomes' only loss is to who you guys consider the GOAT, Tom Brady. Like, there's those are two different types of losses. You know what I mean? So, if once again, if he goes out and he breaks all these records and... He breaks the passing yards record, passing touchdowns record. He does all these crazy feats, and then he goes on to win eight Super Bowls, and he's been to nine, and they only ever lost to Brady. I mean, that's a hard argument. 
in my eyes, I guess you could you could look at it from both sides. You could still give Brady the goat because you're like, this goat has only ever lost to one guy. So that makes that guy the goat. That guy is seven and three, yeah, but he's beat this goat. So I don't know. That's a hard argument, but he would have to like I said, he would have to do excuse me, he would have to do like some absurd stuff to become the goat. So to give you a lot of mixes, Drew Brees there's only been it's only ever been like I'll look I'll look this up too because I know this stat but I want I want to be right about it when I say this people are gonna be like wait is that true and I promise you this is a true stat and I I love this stat because it's like wait what there's only been not there's only been nine times. There's only been nine times where 5,000 yards has been thrown in a season, right? It's only been nine times. Drew, Bre Drew Brees by himself has done, he's done it five times of those nine. That by itself is, is unbelievable. So Peyton Manning has done it. Tom Brady has done it. Um, the, oh, they're not counting. They didn't count Mahomes. He threw 5,000 yards. Um... Um, but did he throw five? No, he didn't yet. He threw 50 touchdowns, which that's only happened three times, and Mahomes has already done that one time. So the Mahomes hasn't thrown 5,000 yet, I believe. I thought he did, though. I am i don't think that's true. When was this article written? Oh, yeah, this is old. That's why. I'm going to go to this this one. Sorry. Okay. So it's been done. One, one, two, three. Move. One, two, three, four. It's been done 12 times, and Drew Brees has done it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 out of 12 times. Because um, on the list now are Patrick Mahomes and Jameis Winston. They got added. I was like, I know. When I didn't see him on the list, I was like, I know Patrick Mahomes threw 5,000 yards. So, because he's um, there's only ever been one time, now twice, there's only ever been one time where someone has thrown for 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns, and that's when Peyton Manning did it in 2013. And then Mahomes did it in 2019 when he won, uh, 2018 when he won MVP. So, well, how do they do the years? Because this is 2021. So, he technically did it in like the 2018, 2019 season. So, I guess he did it in 2019. So, and I only know all these stats because I'm a huge legacy guy. We, we, I think you guys know this about me. But I look into stats all the time. I want to see who's done what the fastest, who's done what the youngest, who's done something the longest. Like Brett Favre's, um, Brett, Favre, Brett Favre's record for most games played like without missing one or missing starts. That that record I don't think will ever be broken either. Like that record is disgusting. It's like like years worth of games. Do you have to play sixteen games in a in a season? Drew Bre um excuse me, Brett Favre is like. Drew Brees on my screen. I got to take him off. So. Uh, Brett Favre is like 260 or 70 something crazy games without missing one. So you do that number divided by 16, and that's how many straight football seasons he's just played. It's more than 10 years. It's, it's just unspeakable. Where I was going with that, why Drew Brees, why did that record even come up? Is Duran going on a tangent? Well, duh. Yes, that's who Duran is. But two, I think if. Mahomes broke a record like that, like, oh, each year this man is throwing 5,000 yards. Like, he's done it seven times. Uh, or eight times out of his 20, 20 years in the NFL, he's thrown um, 5,000 yards. He came close this year, too, and they didn't play him in the last game, and I was sick. I don't like I don't like things like that. I completely get why they do it, but because I'm such a legacy guy, that takes away from your legacy because that adds up. Let's say Mahomes is always the first seed. They have a fourteen. They they have fourteen win games, thirteen win games. They have so many wins that he never plays the last game of the season, and he averages three hundred yards um, per game always. So if you do that three hundred yards per game, and he doesn't play the last game of the season every year for the next fifteen years, that's fifteen times three hundred. That's like forty five hundred yards knocked off of his his uh resume so if you get to the end of his career and he's and he has eighty thousand passing yards or something he could have had eighty four thousand passing yards that's a big difference that's a se like that's a season's worth of yards because he didn't play the last game of the season so i i personally don't like that i hate that they do that
especially they were already going to have a bye week. So they said, Mahomes, let's not let Mahomes play and then give him a bye week as well. Uh, and he was fighting for the MVP. I would have been like, yo, go get the MVP. Like, what the heck? I would have told Coach, I'm playing. Uh, I'm rocking my alma mater, NJIT. Um, but I think Mahomes has to break, like, almost every record and do the unnameable, the unnameable, unspeakable, crazy feats to be able to do it. Like, I think Peyton Manning, Peyton, I know, I don't think Peyton Manning has the most regular season MVPs of all time with five. I think Mahomes would have to do that, like get like five or four or five MVPs. Honestly, more like five. He might even have to get like six. Yeah, he might even have to get like six. Like next year, he's got to come out with a vengeance and get like do something unspeakable, like throw for sixty passing touchdowns and. 5,800 yards or something. I th I actually think he's going to be the first quarterback ever to throw for 6,000 yards. That that just sounds unheard of, but I think he's going to do it. I think he's going to throw for 6,000 yards one season. Oh, hopefully it's next season. But he needs to do... For Mahomes become the go to my eyes. He needs to do something that's never been done. No, no one's ever gotten 60 touchdowns. No one's ever gotten a 6,000 yards. So you don't have to do both, but do one. If you do both, awesome. You got to do one or the other. No one's ever gotten to 90,000 passing yards. I mean, Brady might still get it. He's still in the league. He's at 88,000. Or Drew Brees is, might do it too. They're both at 88,000. They might not retire. I think Drew Brees is done. But uh, Tom Brady said he's coming back. So Tom Brady might get 90,000. So if he, if Tom Brady gets 90,000, then Mahomes got has to get like 95. So you got to either get 6,000 passing yards in a season, 60 touchdowns in a season, first person ever to get to 95,000 career passing yards, um, first person ever to get to, I think the touchdowns right now are, um, I don't know the touchdowns off the top of my head, I think it's five something, most career touchdown passes, I think it's 580 something. I'm not going to lie, I don't know that number off the top of my head. 581. Oh, I, I told you, I'm, I'd be getting close. Tom Brady has the most touchdown passes of all time, 581. Drew Brees in second with 571. So, you can't say this, man. This is the GOAT. Tom Brady has the most passing touchdowns of all time. And if you look at um, passing yards, right? Tom Brady has 79,204. Oh, I thought they had, they had way more than that. So, yeah, Mahomes has got that. They've been playing a long time. And for them to have that much, okay. So, Mahomes has to, Mahomes has to be like the first one to get like eighty-five thousand because they've been playing forever. Like I said, Drew Brees has had some unheard of seasons, five five seasons with five thousand passing yards, and they're both basically at eighty thousand. I think that's why Tom Brady's coming back. I'm glad I looked at this. That's probably why Tom Brady's coming back. Drew Brees is going to retire. And Tom Brady's going to be like, yeah, but now I'm the all-time. I, when he retires, he's going to be the all-time leaders in touchdown passes, all-time leader in uh, passing yards. If if he has that many passing touchdowns next year, if he gets more than 29, he'll be the first person ever to hit 600. Jesus Christ. I... I I think I think the GOAT conversation, to me, is over. I'm going to have to revisit it in, in 2041. I don't even want to think about being that old, but I think the GOAT conversation is over. This, these numbers are ridiculous. Tom Brady has 581 touchdowns, seven Super Bowls. Let's, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Let's say he doesn't win next year. He, he messes around and win next year, too, but let's say he doesn't. Retires with seven Super Bowls, 600 passing touchdowns, most of all time, first to ever hit 600. And then we go to passing passing yards. I'll add, let's say he just throws for like 3,000 next year. So he gets to 82,000 82, passing yards. I'll do, I'll back up. M number one in most touchdowns passes ever. First to ever get to 600. Seven Super Bowls. First in um, 
passing yards. Retires his first in passing yards with 82,000, just about. Most the highest winning percentage of all time ever of any sports history. Five Super Bowl MVPs, three regular season MVPs. Maybe he has two. One, two. No, he has three. He has three. He got one. He got one in twenty eight, two thousand eight, twenty sixteen, and twenty fourteen. Because he won that one, then got old and came back. And 2008, 2014, and 2016. He has three MVPs. Should I Google it? Let's Google it. How many MVPs does Tom Brady have? Watch him have three. I don't know why I'm doubting myself. No, not Super Bowl MVP. Regular season MVP, he has three-time NFL Most Valuable Player. I was wrong about the the one date. It was um, they do it. At, I do it after they do it before. I don't know why they do it like that. Like like I said, for me it was the 2008 he was MVP because that it was the 2007 2008 season. But they did it before, so they said 2007. Um, and they, then the 2010 2011 season. And then the 2016, 2017. So I said 2016 and in 2008. So I was right about two. And then 2011 for the other one. He also got comeback player of the year award because they he tore his uh, Achilles or his he messed up his foot somehow. I I remember when he messed up his foot, and then he got comeback player of the year because he came back and he was Tom Brady. <laughs> so I'm 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 a re now that I have his stats up, I'm going to read it. And I I think the GOAT conversation is over. Also because of expectations. Tom Brady's story plays a lot into this. To compare him to his counterpart, Peyton Manning, everyone always compares Tom Brady to Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, to me, is the best regular season quarterback of all time. Tom, like, he, it's just, like, he has five MVPs for a reason. You know, I just think he's the best regular season quarterback of all time. Brady could argue that, too. But I think it's Peyton. If you look at his winning and you just look at everything. But when he came to the big stages, Peyton always, like, fumbled the bag. And he always had to go up against Brady. And who would win? Brady. That's another reason why, to me, Brady's the GOAT. Brady has taken down some monsters. Brady, Brady was in the situation that Mahomes is in now, and he won. He didn't lose. For you, those of you that are like, what is, what is Daron talking about? Brady had to go against the greatest offensive juggernaut at the time called if you go look up the um the uh I don't remember they have a funny name the greatest show on turf is what they called that Rams team they had Kurt Warner uh Marshall Falk both Hall of Famers Isaac Bruce uh what's that other they had another wide receiver that was great they had the, the they called it the greatest show on turf, a play on words to the greatest show on earth because the offensive power that they had was unbelievable. And Tom Brady, they were they the Rams were favorited. Tom Brady was so young and fat, and he was a six round draft pick. He was if you don't know Tom Brady's story, he was just like drafted to be a backup quarterback. He wasn't looked at and no expectations. He was a six round draft pick. He was behind a Hall of Fame quarterback, Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe gets hurt. Who has to come in? Tom Brady has to come in. You know what he does? He takes his team and they win a Super Bowl. <laughs> so, so Tom Brady was in the situation that Mahomes was in. Like, yo, are you going to beat this goat of all teams? Like, this is the, the maybe the greatest team ever assembled. Brady goes and wins. With no expectations. He's a six-round draft pick. So he's a seven-time Super Bowl champion, five-time Super Bowl MVP, three-time NFL Most Valuable Player, two-time NFL Offensive Player of the Year, one-time NFL Comeback Player of the Year, three-time First Team All Pro, second team, two-time Second Team All Pro, fourteen times Pro Bowls, four-time NFL Passing Touchdowns Leader, three-time NFL Passing Yards Leader, two-time NFL Passing Passer Rating Leader, the NFL's completion percentage leader in 2007 um 
and then this is just like talking about the all-time teams type of thing. Uh, NFL 2000s all-decade team, unanimous NFL 2010s all-decade team, uh, un un unanimous NFL 100th anniversary all-time team, Associated Press Male Athlete of the Year in 2007. Um, hmm. Touchdowns, 581 touchdowns. And that's, I'm going to read, like I said, if he was to retire. 600, 600 touchdowns, 82,000 passing yards. He hasn't, I don't think his passer rating will go up or down that much. It's at 97.3, so let's just call it 98. 98 passer, and I could put it down. Let's say he has an off season, 96.5 passer rating. He has 1,043 rushing yards and 25 rushing touchdowns. Mm. Brady's just, I don't, man, he's just a goat, man. He ran a 5.28 in a 40-yard dash. There were no expectations of this man. There were none. Go, baby. There was, there's just no expectations of this man, yo. So, I think, for me, the GOAT conversation is over. Unless, and it doesn't have to be Mahomes, because Mahomes might be out of it. I'll put it like this. We don't, we don't say that LeBron doesn't have a chance to become the GOAT because he didn't get to play against Jordan. Like, oh, you didn't play against him, so there's no way you could become the GOAT. Or Shaq is, could never be better than Kareem uh, because he never get got to play against Kareem, you know, like we we don't do that. So if Trevor Lawrence or uh, Joe Burrow, I think it I think it have to be somebody new like Trevor Lawrence because they have to beat to to me anyway. They have to beat Mahomes' new records. I mean, they you don't have to be the youngest or first to do something. Like Brady wasn't the youngest to get to that many passing touchdowns, that many yards. He just played for a long time. So I guess I'm wrong by saying that. So there, maybe there's someone, like Joe Burrow could maybe still become the new GOAT. If Joe Burrow goes on to, I, I do not think he will be. But there's a, let me get the, let me say something first. There's a reason why what Tom Brady is, has done has never been done before. Like, it's not easy to do what he's done. I'm, I'm, I'm not downplaying it by saying, oh, like, maybe this new person will come out and be the GOAT. But just because we're humans, that's, we're always going to look for, well, who's going to top this guy? And... Especially because there's someone like Mahomes that's alive right now that we're watching. Like, yo, you, we've never seen someone, not never, because Joe Montana. It's it's rare that we've seen someone be the most talented and be the greatest. You know what I mean? Like, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is, I mean, duh. He's the, probably the most talented, if not like LeBron, one, two, three. Most talented player that's ever been alive. And he's the most winningest. But he also has had Scottie Pippen. He had a, a Hall of Fame Phil Jackson coach. The, um, he had Steve Kerr. And he had Dennis Rodman. He had teammates. You know what I mean? Like, it's very rare that we see someone be the most talented player. And they get into a situation where they're like, it's destined for them to be great. Like, we look at Penny Hardaway. Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson is beyond talented. He wasn't in a good situation, didn't have the teammates he needed. And he himself wasn't coachable. It's very rare that you see someone be the most talented, be coachable, and they're surrounded by great teammates. That's why, to me, in a whole different conversation, LeBron is the, the GOAT of basketball because he has, ne besides D-Wade, like, being in Miami, besides that, he has never had teammates, and he went to 10 straight finals-like appearances. Like, B.A. Brady's done it 10 times over 20 years. LeBron did it from 2000 and. 11 on just in the championship like you could just at the end of the year I mean at the beginning of the year excuse me you could just bet who's going to the the finals it was some team versus LeBron for a 10 year period it was some team versus LeBron that is unheard of and un unthinkable um So that's why, like, for me, plus he has the, the four championships and four MVPs. Like, I think that's why I think LeBron is the go. And I think he still has, like, another six years left in him. <laughs> Excuse me. But I don't know. I think 
I think Tom Brady has answered the call. And to me, that's what you have to do to become the GOAT. And the fact, Tom Brady has never, in my eyes, this is maybe biased, whatever. In my eyes, Tom Brady has never lost himself a Super Bowl. And Mahomes didn't lose himself that Super Bowl yesterday either. But Tom Brady has never lost his team a Super Bowl. When they lost against the Giants the first time, there was a, a play that could never be replicated. If you played it a thousand times, David Tyree is not catching that ball on his head. It's not happening. Second time, I think it was Plexico or no, it was Manningham. I know it was Manningham. He caught that touch, that that catch at the side of the on the left side of the field with his toes <laughs> like this, and that that play, the fact that that play happened, it was that it was unspeakable that that happened. So those are two, like two times that some unspeakable un thinkable thing happens that his team just loses like they put up a fight they put up a game and then they lost and then when they lost against Nick Foles Tom Brady threw 512 passing yards at 40 years old inside the Super Bowl you mean it and they he scored 33 points it just so happened that the Eagles scored more I mean he didn't lose that game for them it just he didn't have enough time to go and score again but he had 512 passing yards it just to ha what it happened. Um, so the fact that he's seven and three is not like his fault. He could, he should, realistically, like just one. His one Super Bowl they lost by I think all times, both times against the Giants they lost by four, and then he lost by eight against the Eagles. So all. All times he's lost has been by less than one touchdown. Like, he's never got blown out and, oh, we weren't in the game. So I, I wanted Mahomes to be, like, the new up-and-coming guy. And I think, I mean, it's, it's, he's not done. Like, I think he's still going to be a great, phenomenal player. But I think the GOAT conversation is over between those two, at least. Unless Mahomes does something unheard of, unspeakable. And just does something like, yo, this man, if he throws for 6,000 yards or 60 touchdowns and then goes on to do those things, what if he does it? If he does it both in one season, it would be crazy. Hmm. But that's really all I got for you guys today. I'm just, I'm just mind blown because we can talk about like, oh, who can do what or who can do next? Tom Brady has, Tom Brady has. Seven Super Bowl wins, which is more than any other football organization ever. And I'm not speaking loosely when I say, oh, Mahomes might, he would have to win eight or something. If Mahomes was to do that, that would be unthinkable. I, mean, I, I don't think he will do it. I, and that's just my opinion. I don't think anyone will win eight Super Bowls. I don't, I don't think anyone will win eight Super Bowls. The fact that Tom Brady has won seven is just like, I don't think people are going to appreciate enough what that means. Seven Super Bowls? Seven, seven Super Bowls. First time, first, number one in passing touchdowns. Number one in passing uh, yards. He's like, this is literally like if someone played Madden. Like, this is literally if someone played Madden, made their, their career guy, got him to a 99, and then they were like, got him to a 99, and then... Just kept playing and was playing like on pro mode. I was like, oh, I'm going to beat all the records. I want number one in all the records. I want to win all the Super Bowls. That's what Tom Brady's doing. Random stat of the day, cause just because it's up here and I didn't know that. Joe Flacco is 19th on the all-time um, passing yards leaderboards. He's 19th. Right, you go, Joe. But that's all, and Eli Manning, who's the, the, the Brady Slayer, he's on number eight. But that's all I got for you guys today. Um, for real, for real, everybody let me know what they think. Like, if the GOAT conversation is over, or does Mahomes still have a chance to become the GOAT one day? Does anyone, not just Mahomes, I don't want to just pick on him, does anyone ever have the chance to be, beat Brady's legacy? Because they can't beat him. I think he, I don't think he's going back to the Super Bowl next year. That's just my opinion. 
So I think he's done. I th honestly feel like he should retire. But I think he's coming back to become the um, all-time passing leader. He's down He's down from Brady, from Breeze by 1,000 yards. I think he's coming back to do it. But does anyone have a chance of beating Brady's legacy? And if they do have a chance, what do they have to do to beat it? Do they have to pass for... Um, I mean, do they have to get eight Super Bowls? Do they have to do something that's never been done before, like pass for 6,000 yards or 60 touchdowns in one season? What do they got to do? You let me know. Follow me on all social media platforms at the Duran Coles, and I will see you guys here tomorrow at 730. Peace.